All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another installment of Gentle Chair Yoga with Keith Beasley. Uh, my name is Bhati Blumenthal. I'm the branch supervisor of the Putterham location of the Public Library of Brookline. Uh, coming again to welcome everybody to this uh, practice. Um, I also wanted to um, thank our friends of the Brookline Library for sponsoring uh, this program and programs like it. Um, I also wanted to thank our uh, community partners, Brookline Interactive Group, for um, streaming our program to their uh, Facebook feeds, their YouTube feeds, and to local uh, cable, um, Comcast, and RCN Channel 3. Um, before we start, uh, I do have to re read a disclaimer. Participation in this online yoga program could result in injury. Not all exercises presented here are suitable for everyone. These exercises are not intended to substitute for proper medical care or advice. Always consult your physician before beginning any exercise program. The creators, teachers, and producers assume no responsibility for injuries from participation in this program. And now here's Keith. Hi, good morning. So welcome to, welcome to yoga. So I'd like to start with a sound. So I'm gonna uh, play the singing bowl. I'm gonna tap on it, but let's uh, make sure you're in seated mountain pose. So we, we do mountain pose a lot in yoga. It's supposed to enforce good posture, which means elongation of the spine or axial extension of the spine. And that's really important whether we're standing or we're seated. So I'll give you a choice here. You could stand and do mountain pose if you wanted like this. If you're familiar with it and you wanna stand, feel free. And think about elongating the spine, good posture or seated. The good thing about standing is it's something different than seated. The good thing about seated and practicing this way is that we sit a lot and sometimes we forget. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna start just with a few breaths. And as you exhale, you can give a little sigh. So we begin to focus and bring our attention on what we can feel. So anything in our body that we can feel, the soles of our feet, where they're touching the floor, maybe around the eyes, softening the eyes, relaxing the face. And then coming a little closer to the center of the body, feeling the belly moving in and out, feeling the breath expanding the lungs. And then as we exhale, we feel the lungs getting smaller, we feel the belly getting smaller. And we'll continue with the good posture, good breathing. And then I'm gonna go ahead and we'll listen at the same time. So see if you can um, do those three things all together. Good posture, sitting up tall, good breathing, feeling the belly moving, and then just listening with the ears. So you really bring your attention right to the ears. You can even imagine that you're focused in your mind's eyes focused in on the uh, the entrance to the ears so you can feel the sound coming in and remember we do all this without straining so we always balance ease and effort here so let's go ahead and we'll tap a few times keep listening and as you exhale relax you exhale, relax. As you inhale, extend, and as you exhale, relax. As you inhale, extend, and as you exhale, relax. You can follow the sound as it gets softer, allow the body to soften. last time.
And as the sound falls away, notice the silence. Yeah. Massage the ears next. Because we've been doing a little bit with the ears. I think I, we, we did this before, I think. And I'll turn sideways so you can see. I'm going to just take my index finger and my thumb, and I'm going to very gently sort of stroke the outside of the ear, almost as if you wanted to make your ears larger without actually. So there's no pain here. I'm not pulling so hard, and I'm not squeezing so hard that there's any pain at all. It actually feels nice. It feels like there's a gentle massage from my fingers. And of course, I'm doing it on both ears even though you could only see one there. And I can follow, I can do the same thing on each ear, so I can go to the top, and then I can start to work my way down. And you can experiment a little bit. You might even reach a little bit more towards the center of the ear, where the, you know, the hole is to go down into the uh, ear canal, and then just let the fingers slide across the ear. And I don't know if anybody remembers, but this was a nice way to uh, ease the fascia that are in this area, and it makes our head turn a little more easily. So it's just a little bit, but a little way to relax the, the neck. And <clears throat> let's release that. And let's start with rocking from side to side. So a little bit of movement and also a little bit of effort here. Definitely take some effort. Warming the body up usually means focusing on the larger muscle groups, and that, that's a way to warm the body a little bit faster. And notice I, I do have some water here, so very important. It's definitely warm today. I think it's supposed to be in the mid-80s, and who knows, it might even go a little higher. So we want to make sure that we drink plenty of water. Sometimes I'll notice that um, if I don't, if I'm, if I'm feeling a little lethargic, I haven't drinking, drank any water in a while. And usually when I drink some water, it makes me feel a little bit more, um, I don't know, more with it. I mean, when, you, when we are dehydrated, it definitely changes the way that our blood circulates around. It doesn't seem to work as well. So very important. And remember, you can lift the knee up a little more. If you want more work, try lifting up more. And then noticing the belly here. So noticing the belly. When I lift my knee higher, these muscles along this side contract. They're definitely working harder. So see if, that's, uh, see if you notice that. See if you notice that. You can also lean more. You could even put your arms out like this if you wanted for balance. If you're concerned about balance, have a chair with arms. Hold on to the arms so that you don't fall out of the chair. Just be careful when you, uh, when you go to the side, you don't bang. We don't want to be banging our ribs and our side on the arms of the chair. Or if, you bang, if they touch, make it very soft. You could even make that, if you have arms, you could even think about so, very softly touching and then coming back. So that's another way to work with this exercise is to go slower. And it changes it a lot. It changes it a lot. It becomes more now, more, a little more of a balance exercise. I'm having to balance and really focus in on feeling the weight in the foot and also in the buttock. And then come back down and let's reach up on one or it's like we're climbing a ladder. So imagine climbing a ladder here. And so this is, you have a choice here with, uh, you could do this standing too. So if anybody was standing before from mountain pose, so you could, you could have done the, this, the seated lifting like this, you can do it standing. So the, uh, I mean, I can't, I, I can't observe you, but if you feel adventurous, if your balance is good and you feel adventurous, you can experiment a little bit. And instead of doing something seated, 
try sanding and see if you can figure out how to make it work so that you get the ideas that's going on, which is when we were lifting the leg up like this, it's working these muscles all along here and also balancing. And so same thing with, uh, <clears throat> if we're seated like this and we're gonna sit up nice and tall and we're doing this climbing or this walking our hands up a ladder like this. So back and forth. And as you reach up with one hand, think about pressing the, the uh, same side foot down. So this arm is up, I'm pressing that foot. So it's an isometric contraction on the hamstring. So if you need to, you can even put your hand here, press the foot down. If you have trouble finding how to press the foot, lean forward a little bit as if you're gonna stand up and think about pressing the foot down and see if that gives a little bit more uh, feeling or a little bit, we, want, we need to be able to feel what's going on in order to make the muscles actually do what we are, want them to do. So as I reach up, I'm activating this quadricep and pressing the foot down on one side. And then I'm switching sides, pressing the other foot down, back and forth. If you're standing, it's a little easier because you can lift the opposite heel up. You could actually do that seated too. But it's a little bit easier like I'm leaning from one side to the other. Let me try that. So continue with, which whether, with, with that, with, whichever one you're doing, seated or standing, continue with that. So you could even lift up the heel on this one too. So I'm pressing the, pressing the foot down and lifting the heel. It doesn't feel quite as natural to me. It's a little harder to do that, but it does work. And then bring the hands down. And then we're going to reach up with both hands. Here you may need to modulate how far you go up. So depending on the, the symmetry in your shoulders, the flexibility in your shoulders. So this is almost like you're doing a pull up. So I'm reaching up and coming down, reaching up. I don't know if anybody still does pull ups. I don't see, they used to be, pull. everybody had pull up. There were a lot of pull up bars around. So if this bothers your shoulders, continue with the one arm. So it's usually, especially if you have any asymmetry. So if your shoulders feel really different, it's usually easier to do one. There's benefit from both. So whether or not you're doing two or one, and if it re it's hard to reach up at all, try just lifting the elbow up like this, see what happens. And think about extending the whole side of the body when you do that. So either way, I'm. So this is another one of these exercises to help us elongate the spine and to bring some suppleness to the spine and then go ahead and lower the hands down and roll the shoulders. Feel free to close the eyes for a moment. So this is a little bit of rest. So think about resting, relaxing, but still having good posture. And then it's going back the other way. And let's do some cactus breathing. So inhale and exhale. And if at any time you want to switch it up and you want to stand up, you can do that, right? The same, so this is the same thing as seated. And then we're going to give ourselves a little hug. Do it like this. Oh. And then inhale. And then hug with the other arm on top. Oh, so that sign helps to relax us. It helps to, I should say, it helps to release the muscles. And we want to be able to, as the arms come around us like this, we want to be able to release the muscles. I'm going to turn around so you can see, I want the shoulder blades to spread apart on this exercise. So notice they're coming together when the hands come apart and then they sweep back and now they're coming apart. So they're starting to move back and forth behind me. And that helps to bring some suppleness to that thoracic area. And let's make the sound of ohm, or actually let's do, uh, let's do brummery. 
Let's do brummery. Um, so that's the bumblebee sound. So we'll do it for about 30 seconds. And remember, it starts very small and it builds up and then it tapers off small. So think of it as a uh, like a crest of a wave rising and then falling away. And, and it's better to be smooth and continuous and short even, even if it's short, than to be choppy and loud and long. So we want it to be so smooth that like a, like a bee, when you see a bee flying, they're so graceful and smooth. So think about a, a bee flying. So let's, and we breathe naturally the whole time. So please don't, don't sacrifice your breath. Breathing naturally, you're, you're welcome to put your hand on your belly if that helps. Let's take a couple of normal breaths and then inhale. Nice and easy. Relaxing the face and eyes. Feeling the vibration in the jaw and the throat. Last one. Soften the face and eyes, relax the jaw, relax the ears, soften the throat, relax the shoulders, let the shoulders hang down, soften the arms, the hands, and the fingers. And let's add a little bit of movement here. <clears throat> so that was yoga for our voice. And the vocal cords are muscles, so they need to be, if you don't exercise your vocal cords, they will um, not work as well. And we'll bring our hands together, and then we're going to inhale up and around. So if you're tired of sitting, if you've been sitting and you're tired of that, you're welcome to stand up and do this. Stand up. You're also welcome if you're seated to close the eyes. You could close the eyes standing up. You have to be really careful of your balance though. So please don't sacrifice your balance to close your eyes. Inhaling up. Ah, exhaling down and around. So there's a lifting as the hands are coming up. There's a lifting of the sternum, the breastbone, a spreading of the chest and the collarbones. And then as the hands, we let them float down as if they're floating down like feathers. And then the hands come together and they float up. And then we're going to change our direction. So we're going to exhale, release the hands down, palms down, then turn the palms up as they come up. We'll make the circles a comfortable circle. So don't go too high and don't make them too small. Actually, it's better to make them smaller than too big. So if your shoulders, are, if you feel like they're bunching up, if your neck bothers you, if your jaw bothers you, when the hands are circling around, try making them smaller and see if you can get that to go away. 
So find a place where you're working that's comfortable. And this is one of those exercises that if you practiced it a little bit throughout the day, you might find that you get a little bit more flexible towards the end of the day. It doesn't mean that you'll be your circles will be twice as big, but it'll mean that they'll be they'll feel easier and they may be bigger. And then we'll come back, bring the hands to the middle. And let's uh, let's all sit down. We're going to bend the spine in six ways. We've done this before. I'm not sure we've done it recently, but so this is like a seated starts with a seated cat and cow. So I'm going to turn so you can see. We sit in our mountain pose and try moving a little bit away from the back of the chair so it's not bumping you in the back. And the ankles are underneath the knees. Notice about a 90 degree angle. So if you need, if you're tall, uh, you may need to sit on something so that the knees aren't sticking up like this. And if you're short, you may need something under your feet so that the knees aren't hang, aren't going down. So we're going to rest the hands on the knees, and then we inhale and exhale. I'm initiating the movement from the heart, or the ch think of it as the chest. So I'm lifting my heart forward, and my shoulder blades move back. And then I'm moving my heart back, and my shoulder blades feel like they're coming forward. Ideally, the shoulders really don't move very much here. And we can, if the arms are straight and the hands rest holding the knees, this becomes a fixed line right here. And really, the chest begins to move back and forth between the shoulder blades, inhaling and exhaling. And you might notice that the chin lifts up a little bit and the hips rock forward as my chest comes forward. But I'm not trying to rock my hips or trying to lift my chin. It's that natural, we change one part of the spine and it ripples into different the other parts of the spine. And see if you can find some suppleness here. So let go of some of the effort. Even if you're not moving as much as you think you should, or as much as you'd like, let go of some of the effort and see if it can become less effortful and more a feeling of suppleness. So here we're going for a quality, not quantity. Or maybe some people would say less is more. Sometimes when we go for that quantity and we all, we all do that, we all have that, that idea that more is better. It's, I think, human nature. And sometimes it is and sometimes it's not. And then come sit up for nice and tall. And then we're going to do a lat. So that was uh, the extension and flexion forward and back for the spine. So the spine is going forward and back like this. And now we're going to go side to side. So this is lateral extension. So I'm going to start just by reaching the hand up. If you want, you can extend the arm and then going to the side and then bringing the hand back down. So reaching up. So if it bothers your shoulders to extend the arm, just bring the arm up to here and lift the elbow. So this is a Cur you notice a curving in the ribs and the spine to the side. So that's what we're working on, this lateral extension. So remember, it's not really about the arms, it's about the side, the, the, uh, the spine. The arms are helping to facilitate that. Usually, though, if it's, dis if it's a lot of discomfort when you extend the arm, then it translates into tension, and that tension translates down the whole body. So usually we end up with the muscles gripping instead of lengthening and bending and extending. You can add the breath here. So inhale up, exhale down. Inhale up, exhale down. So keep breathing and extending, and then add the feet to it. 
Notice the foot on the uh, same as what we did before, but instead of straight up and pressing the foot down, we're leaning to the side. So there's actually a tendency when we lean for that opposite foot to lift up. So instead of letting it lift up, press it down. So activate the thigh on this same side. So we're going back and forth. And see if you can find a little bit of ease here, a little rhythm. Just let the body very gently. So I'm reaching, I'm inhaling and pressing the foot down. Inhaling, reaching, pressing the foot. Inhale, reaching, pressing the foot. And try not to let, sometimes there's a tendency for the shoulder to come forward when we reach because it's difficult sometimes to actually keep it sideways. So don't sacrifice, don't reach and sacrifice this, uh, this the uh, flatness of the torso here, the plane of the torso. So we want to stay in the same plane if we can. You might even think about moving the uh, elbow back slightly, moving the shoulder back to keep it in line or in the same plane as the torso. And you, it might mean you have to go a little slower. So we have to be more mindful to actually teach the body to stay in that same plane position. And then go ahead and bring the arms down. And of course, you can, you're always welcome to take a break for a moment. We're rolling the shoulder. Excuse me, rolling the shoulders, and then the other way. So we're going to do a turning now, and starting with the hands, uh, or the fingers up on the shoulders like this, and then lift the elbows slightly, and then move. Think about moving the elbows back, or moving the elbow back. So moving the elbow back, you could even, if it's comfortable tap the back of the chair. So it depends on your flexibility here. And it depends on relaxing the belly. So this turning, when we turn at the waist, is a combination. Some of the muscles have to relax really well to allow the twist. And then some of the muscles have to engage to actually perform the twist. So we need this, we need them to work together. So I'm moving my elbows back. And then notice your feet. And try to keep the feet even. I'm not, I'm not pressing them down really hard, but I'm just noticing, feeling the bottoms of my feet. <clears throat> feeling the bottoms of my feet. And then if your neck is really good and you want to turn to look slightly over the shoulder as you turn, move the elbow back, you can. We always want to be mindful about our necks, though, because many people um, um, overestimate the neck. And then we'll come back to the front. So that was bending the spine in six ways. And let's, uh, let's do a warm-up with all the range of motion for the joints, starting with the hands. So we're doing the hands, opening and closing. So you can vary the speed a little bit. You can play with the speed a little. You're certainly welcome to do it at the same speed as, as mine, but you could even slow it down if you wanted. If you want to slow the feeling of, uh, slow the breath down, slow the energy down a little bit. Maybe you had a lot of coffee this morning. Maybe you didn't have any coffee and you want to go a little faster to kind of get pumped up a little bit. So remember, we can use the breath and the, and the speed of our movements to modulate how we're feeling, our energy. I'm going to start to make some circles like this. Some more for the wrists. And then we're going to add the elbows to it. And also the hands. So the fingers are going to come back in. And we get this opening. And then as the hands come back, the fingers are coming in. So the gentle... Uh, closing to the hands, not really much of a fist, just a gentle closing. And then I'm going to go the other way. But we've got the elbows going, even the shoulders are going a little bit here. Shoulders, elbows, wrists, 
and uh, fingers. If you can feel the center of the palms, if you can finger, feel the fingers themselves moving. So this might work better if you uh, close the eyes <clears throat> and then we're gonna rest the hands and we're gonna rock the feet. We're gonna lift up. And as you lift up, go ahead and spread the toes and then relax the toes when you come down, lift up, spread. Relax. So every time we do, whenever we do movements, whenever we do um, sort of these combination movements, we want to be, we're engaging and then relaxing. Engaging and relaxing. Let's try that actually. Let's try, uh, try rocking the feet and and extending the fingers at the same time. Rocking the feet and extending the fingers. So my fingers here are going straight out just the same as my toes. So even though I'm rocking back and extending the fingers, rocking back and extending. Almost like my fingers are shooting out like I've got, uh, I'm a, uh, I don't know what superhero it is, but Somebody probably has something that shoots electricity out of their fingers. So I'm shooting my electricity out of my fingers as I'm rocking. And remember, don't let the knees splay out. You might need to engage the, uh, the adductors. You can always use a block for that if you want. So that's handy or a rolled up towel or a ball, a small squishy ball. Anything that just requires a little bit of, uh, I think I'm going backwards now. So let's see, so this, oh no, no, I think that was right. So I'm lifting my heels, but you could do it backwards too. So I could do it so that my hands are closed when my heels are up. And then when my toes lift up, my fingers go out. So if you want to experiment a little, there's not really any, um, there's no necessarily right or wrong with these with these combination of movements, and you can always change it up. It's really helpful for our uh, our um, our muscle memory and also the neurological connection between the muscles, between the movement and the brain to actually change things so that it's different. Um, <clears throat> And let's see, so we were doing the feet. Oh, so let's, uh, let's uh, scoot back and we'll go ahead and circle the ankles. And then go ahead and let the ankles slow down for a moment. You might get a little bit of popping, but no pain. If you're having pain, try making the circles a little slower and a little smaller. And then go ahead and rest and then lift up one foot and lower it down. So I'm just going to start by a few leg lifts, not thinking about the foot so much for a moment. Have your hands resting on your thighs. So you feel this thigh engaging. So when I'm, uh, and also oh, make sure you're sitting up. So remember, you can use a lumbar support if you want, especially for these exercises to sit back all the way in the chair and have a little something behind the lumbar helps to maintain the curve, the three curves in the back. So remember when we change one part, when we change one curve in the back, it affects the other two. So we're, uh, let's see, we were uh, leg lifting like this. And see if you can make sure that the toes are pointed straight up and also the legs go straight out. And sometimes, at least in the beginning, that can be a little bit of a struggle because sometimes the legs want to go out to the side a little or the toes want to bend out or the foot wants to bend out. And then let's go ahead and lift up one foot and let's point and flex. And again, see if you can make sure you can keep it straight. And let's do this. Let's add the hand to it, the elbow joint. So, so the, el the knee and the elbow are both hinge joints. 
So go ahead and straight, and then so I'm going back and forth. And they're kind of doing the opposite, I guess, really. I mean, we could make them do the same like this, but I, I think this feels better. Um, oh, actually, that's good, too. So let's try this. Try bringing your fingers up. Bring your fingers up onto the shoulders like this, and then go ahead and straighten the leg and straighten the arm so that the back of the hand rests on the knee, and then come back. That's kind of cool, actually. So now I'm straightening both appendages at the same time, keeping the shoulder relaxed and keeping the belly engaged enough so I still have good posture. So I'm taking one foot away. I don't want to lose my feeling of lift. And let's switch sides. So go ahead and lift the other foot up, and let's point and flex a few times. So it's like a curling of the foot over and then a, a, a flexing of the foot back. So this is actually flexing of the ankle because I'm, I'm bending a lot at the ankle. And then I'm going to add the, uh, I'm going to add my arm to it. So I'm going to rest the back of my hand on the knee and then I'm going to, oh wait, no. So it's, <laughs> it's uh, uh, touching the shoulder to what we were doing. We were bending both and then straightening. And now my hand, back of the hand touches the knee. So I'm going to go back and forth like that. And if you wanted to do the opposite, if you, if you, if you got that, if you prefer that, go ahead. And a couple more. You can even add the breath. Inhale as you extend. Exhale as you bend. Inhale, extend. Make sure you're elongating the spine and sitting up tall. You can even engage the other foot by pressing with this, uh, with that thigh in, into the floor. So we get a little bit extra support for the spine and then come back down. And let's do a few more leg lifts like this. Inhaling up and exhaling down. This time we're using the opposite arm and leg, as if we had a connection between the fingers and the leg. So almost like a, a dancer being graceful, lifting up. And as you reach up, as you reach up, think about extending the spine and being tall, elongating, using the arm for lift, even though we've got the leg isn't supporting us anymore. And if you want, if you need something, if this is too easy and you want to add something, don't use the back of the chair. It's definitely harder with no back of the chair. It's harder to maintain the length in the spine. Be, be mindful that you're not collapsing in the lower back. So we still want to be able to extend. We want to be able to keep the curve. And you'll notice that my back starts to round with no support. I, I don't want that. I want my spine to be long, so I still have at least a flat back here. I'm not rounding backwards. If you're rounding, please use the back of the chair. So it's definitely more challenging. Try pressing more with that opposite foot. So when we take that, uh, we take one foot away, we need more support. We have to get it somewhere. We can get a little bit in the buttocks, but we can also get it in that, uh, in the foot that's on the floor, that's remaining on the floor. And a couple more. Say so one more on each side. Oh, I did two. Sorry. <laughs> and let's come back down and inhale. And exhale, big sigh. Ah. And then we'll slide forward in the chair a little bit. And we're going to make some circles. So please circle around. You can even let the head circle a little bit. That can be nice too. And then we're going the other way. And let's do the neck. We're sitting up nice and tall. 
and we release the chin down. So the chin's going to go up and down. Remembering not to drop the chin, the uh, not to drop the head way back. Not good for the back of the neck. A little bit is okay. I'm really relaxing as I release the chin down. I'll turn sideways so you can see more easily if that's helpful. So I'm really relaxing the back of my neck as the chin comes down. And there might be a slight rounding in the back. Try not to let it round too much, though. So we still want an elongated spine as we do these exercises. So you'll notice that there's still a little curve down in my lumbar. And that's where that blanket, so if you use the back of the chair and you have a blank, rolled up blanket or a rolled up anything, you could even use a block. Uh, it helps to maintain the curve. I can even take my block and put it behind. And if, as long as you don't have one of the wooden ones, if you have one of the really heavy, hard blocks, it will not be comfortable. So the foam blocks are a lot, a uh, lot better. And if you drop them on your foot, you might not break your foot. So <clears throat> you always have to be careful with anything heavy. So props are really good. I use props a lot. Um, and then we're going to uh, tip the head from side to side. You're welcome to make our pillow with the hands if you want. So it's very important here as we exhale to really just let the ear settle on, settle down or settle onto the head. And that will allow this, uh, the top, the side of the neck that's on top to soften and relax. And you might notice just a little bit of bending to the side too. If I just let my head rest to the side, I get a little bending in the side ribs. And there is a connection, I mean, We've talked about the fascial system in the body, the fascia, the covering of the muscles by that, that sheath. And, uh, you know, all the fascia is connected. So the fascia down here is interconnected with the fascia in the shoulder and the neck. So they support each other and they also limit each other. <clears throat> and let's turn our head, sweep our chin. And you're welcome to use the arm here if you want. The one thing I like about moving an, the arm like this is I can move it. It feels a little more graceful to me and ease of movement than just moving the head. And then I let my that feeling of ease and gracefulness transfer to the to the feeling of my neck moving. And then I'm going to switch hands. So if this bothers your neck at all, make the movement smaller and try a little slower. Even more ease, more ease. And then we're going to circle the hand up and around. Circling the hand up and around. So for me, I'm, I'm circling right now in a clockwise rotation. And then I'm going to change the direction. But you could do it either way. It doesn't matter. But we want to make sure that we do each side. And when you do this, see if you can keep the palm facing forward. And then it drops down. And palm faces forward. Kind of like you're waving like this. You could, let's try that, actually. Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's make an oval shape. So the shape is like this. The oval is turned uh, is uh, this a sideways oval. So it's longer this way than this way. So letting that hand, and then I'm following it with the neck, and then I'm going to lower that hand down. I'm going to do the other side now, the other hand. So I'm doing it clockwise to start with. I'm going to make that oval shape again. 
So I'm following my hand around with my neck and my eyes, and then I'm gonna change directions. So we get a little bit of mo movement in the neck with this coordinated with the movement in the shoulder. And let's bring the hands together and take some cactus breathing. Inhale and exhale hug. And we'll do this a few times. So at your own pace here. So remember, follow your breath. Don't follow me. I mean, follow me with what we're doing, more or less, but don't follow me with your breath. That's the one. One thing is we all breathe differently. And if you're practicing with somebody else, don't expect them to be working at exactly the same pace. We're all different. And that's the one nice thing about doing stuff online is that as you're practicing, as your practice matures, you can actually make adjustments that you find work for you. And that's an important thing. In yoga, we, uh, <clears throat> we frequently can't, uh, we can't go to a class every day. So we need to find things that we can do on a regular basis that we can, that are easy enough to do and remember how to do them. And we can do them ourselves. So sitting up nice and tall, sitting up nice and tall and breathing in and breathing out. So we're going to stand up now or um, <clears throat> stay seated. So we're going to start with our, uh, we're going to do tree pose um, and triangle pose. And then uh, we're going to do eagle arms at the end. So you can do this seated or standing. And with our tree pose, if you're seated, it's like this. We sit up nice and tall, and then we bring the foot out to the side. If you're standing, go ahead and begin in mountain pose, in mountain pose. So this is tree pose like this, seated, and inhaling up and coming back down. And if you're doing it seated, try the uh, keeping the arms gently moving like this when you're doing tree pose. And each time you reach up, sit up a little taller. And if you're standing to do tree pose, we'll do it slightly different. The, the basic idea is the same. We're going to be rooting our feet into the floor and then and releasing one foot. So this, this straight leg is nice and firm. And then I'm going to turn my thigh out. So this is the same as if you were seated. And then we'll find a spot for the sole of the foot. And if you want to add your arms standing, we will keep them in about the same position. Or if you'd like to vary the position, stay in the position for a couple of breaths rather than flapping. You could try flapping. It doesn't, this feels more like crane pose to me rather than tree pose. So whatever position you're in, seated, standing, and then we'll go ahead and bring the arms down. And we're going to switch sides. So if you're seated, same thing. Sit up nice and tall. Seated mountain pose. Move, open the thigh. Move that uh, foot out and find the leg of the chair. Or you could even just rest your toes on the floor. They don't even, they don't have to be on part of the chair. But it's nice to have something to gently press into. So that's the same as if you're standing. And then you shift the weight into the opposite leg. Firm leg, straight leg. And then we're standing up nice and tall, and then we're going to turn that thigh out and then find a spot for the sole of the foot. So I'm standing up nice and tall. Standing up nice and tall. And then I can add my arms however I want. So this, remember, this is your choice. You can, some people like them up here. If your shoulders are, feel okay, some people like the arms out like a real, like a tree, like branches on a tree. Some people might even prefer to have the hands in front of the heart. Remember to breathe. The most important thing is breathing. And then we'll go ahead and come back down. And then lower the hands down. So we'll get a choice here too for triangle pose. So I'll show you triangle pose seated first. <clears throat> so we've done this before. We have the feet apart. And the feet end up pointing out a little bit. 
And so if triangle pose seated, I'm gonna sit up tall and then I bring my arm up and I let my hand slide down my shin as I lean over to that side. And then I'm gonna come back up. So try adjusting how far apart the feet are and also uh, how much the feet turn out so that it's comfortable. We don't wanna over, uh, overturn the feet out or over uh, extend, open the legs. So we need to find a spot that's comfortable and the same thing with how far we come down. We need to be comfortable so that as we, as we come back up, it's not straining. So if you're going down and it's a real strain to come back up, that's probably too far. You could even use a block. You could even use a block actually, or a chair. So that as you reach down, you have a place to rest the hand and you might find it easier to come up. And if you're doing triangle pose standing, you have the feet apart. So if you're doing it seated, do one side and then do the other side and try it for three breaths. Either two, say two or three breaths. So as you lean, as you do your triangle pose, just relax, stay there and breathe. And if you're doing it standing, step the feet apart and then go ahead and just like they were doing seated, but my knees are straight. My arm's going to come up and I'm going to lean over to the side and I'm going to inhale and come back up and I'm going to do the other side. So notice how my hand is going down the leg and then I come back up. And you can also adjust the width of the feet here and also try not to turn the feet out much if you're standing nor in triangle pose traditionally the feet are actually straight ahead but you can separate them more. So if you want more of a challenge, you can separate them more. <clears throat> and then come back up and then lower the arms down and step the feet back to you. Let's try that again. So you have the instructions for either seated or standing. So if you're seated or standing, feet come apart and then the arm comes up and then we're going to let the hand come down the leg and then we're going to inhale and come back up and bring the opposite arm down so now let's do it with the breath exhaling and then inhaling and exhaling as we come down then the inhale brings us up it's almost like we it's almost like we get buoyancy from the inhalation and helps to bring us up and then we're going to exhale and go to the other side. One more, one more on each side. So whether you're standing or seated. And inhale up. And exhale the opposite side. And then inhale. And then lower back down. <coughs> and then step the feet back together. And bring the feet back together. And we're going to do eagle arms. So eagle arms is, is good for the shoulders, and you can do it seated. I'm going to start seated, but you're welcome to stay standing and doing this. It's actually a good, can be a good practice either way. So eagle arms is the one we interlace like this. So we'll swing the hands like this, as if we're conducting an orchestra. And then we're going to take the left arm left arm i'm going to mirror you left arm's going to swing under the right elbow and come around like this so for some people it may be challenging you might only be able to get it like this you could also use a tie or um, any piece of fabric a shirt a t-shirt actually here i have a i have a napkin so here's a napkin it's really actually uh, really easy. So I have a napkin. I swing like this and I can hold the napkin like this. So anything that I can just hold on. So it's a little bit easier to keep the interlace. I don't have to work so hard. And then I'm going to take a few breaths like this. So just get in the position and take, say, three breaths here. Relaxing each time you exhale. So the important thing here is we're a little wrapped up but we're not in a position where we're straining. So if you're straining, release the uh, 
release it a little bit. You could also work with the uh, arms like this, if you wanted, holding each one of the shoulders. So this is really similar, except the hands aren't coming together. You could even work like this. And then we'll release and let the arms, let's just dangle the hands and the arms. So just give it a little shake. And then we're going to do the other side. So if you do, if you are using some sort of a helper device, it's good to actually have it in your hand. And so we're just swinging. And we did the uh, we did the left under right. Now we're going to do the right under left. Right under left. Like this. And we're going to breathe. Most important thing here is to actually relax is to relax and let the breath do the work let the breath do the work and if you find this is really easy if you've interlaced your hands and you're having no issues your shoulders feel good as you inhale you can very gently lift the elbows up don't allow the shoulders so if the shoulders are rising with the elbows then uh, we'll have to be more patient and Next time, you can try again lifting the elbows. And then we'll release and then swing the arms back and forth. And let's do this. Let's, let's tap the uh, shoulders or the elbows or, the, or the, uh, the upper arms, the shoulders, or the shoulder blades. So this swinging like this. Give a little tap. I'm going to turn around so you can see. Just swinging the arms giving a little sort of tap so it's not hurting it's just sort of waking things up and easing things but if you need to you can make it a little smaller movement and then we'll go ahead and we'll sit back down actually you know what sorry let's stand back up or if you're seated so we're going to do the uh the stepping the foot back like this so let's try that. So this is seated, and I'll stand up in a moment and demonstrate, stepping the foot back and forward. So if you're in a chair, you may want to slide towards the front of the chair. It makes it a little bit easier to step the foot back. If you're, uh, if you're too much on the chair and you try to push the foot back, it bumps into the chair. So you may need to slide more towards the edge of the chair. Just make sure you have support on the chair. So my sitting bones are still on the chair, and I'm going to step back. And I'm going to do this uh, a few times. Let's say we do it about six or eight times. And if you're standing, if you're standing, the movement is like this. Thinking about lifting the heart up each time. Lifting the heart up. So each time I step back, I extend the spine like I'm lifting up. And if your balance is good and you want to do a little bit more, you can lift the arms up or you can lift one arm up. You can lift one arm. Try lifting the opposite arm if it's one arm. And then we're going to switch sides. So please switch sides with me. So whether or not you're standing and lifting the arm, or you're standing and stepping back. Think about where the foot is here. So, so in order to get that lengthening and that opening in the front of the hip joint, we have to actually step the foot back a couple of feet behind the foot. And then releasing it, we step the foot just forward of the other foot. So going back and forth. And if you're seated, <clears throat> It's really the same thing. It's stepping back and then stepping forward to release. So that really helps to release the, uh, the buttocks when we step forward. And then we'll come back and now we'll sit down. So now we're gonna go ahead and sit down. <clears throat> And we're going to do a little stirring. 
So we'll slide forward in the chair and we'll circle the shoulders around. So the shoulders are circling around. And if you want, you can have the, the hands on the knees and circle in and bending the elbows at the same time. So we get a little bit of uh, almost like a little push up. As I come forward, my elbows bend. And as I go back, I use my arms to help push me back up. Think about how wide the feet are. So make sure you're in a, your feet are positioned such that they feel like they're supporting you. So you might need them a little wider. You might want them a little closer, but usually not this close and usually not this wide, somewhere in the middle. So for me, it's about, <clears throat> about a 45, so it ends up being about a 90 degree angle between the thighs. And we'll change directions if you haven't already. And let's sit up nice and tall. <clears throat> and we'll take a few breaths with some movement. Inhaling up, exhaling down. And notice as you do this, if your spine, if your back feels a little more flexible than when we started, we did this movement at the beginning. Maybe there's a little more ease in the shoulder joints a little more ease, a little more suppleness as you're inhaling and lifting the heart forward. So always looking for a little bit more in yoga, as in noticing that things have changed. And then let's go the other way. Relax the hands down and then circling up and over. And inhaling up, palms come together, exhaling, releasing the palms down, turning the palms up, inhaling. And I'm gonna to start to let the, the uh, breath come back to a nice, natural, normal, soft feeling. So the breath begins to slow down. So this is really my warm down. And then we're going to bring the hands down. Do a few cactus breaths. Very, very easy cactus breaths here. So my arms might not be going as far apart as they would have, would have at, at the beginning. But you might feel a little bit more ease of movement, a little nice sweeping feeling with the arms. Nice sweeping feeling. And then I'm going to lower the arms down and roll the shoulders a couple of times. And I want to add whatever I need on my chair to be comfortable in a comfortable seated position. So if your chair is hard, you can always put a blanket behind you um, or a towel or something. And I'm going to add a little lumbar support here. So remember, you can use a rolled towel for that too. And you could even experiment. You could move your lumbar support a little bit up or down and see where it's most comfortable, where you end up being most comfortable. So some days you might find it actually feels a little bit, a little bit lower for me today. It feels nice. And then adjust the knees so they're a comfortable distance apart. Probably a little bit more than hip width. Remembering when, when the knees are apart, it's easier to let the pelvis rock forward. And, that, and then it's easier for the lumbar to have the curve, the little bit of curve that it needs. And that makes it easier to extend the spine. And I'm going to rest my hands on the knees, on the thighs, in the lap. You know, I often do the lap, but you know, the knees feel better for me today. So you can experiment. It's really about what, how, how am I feeling today? I'm softening the eyes and the face. 
So I'm starting to relax the body. I'm starting to really feel the body, feeling the back of the neck, feeling the tops of the shoulders, relaxing the arms and the hands and the fingers, releasing the jaw, the tongue and the throat. Softening the heart and the chest. Relaxing the front ribs and the belly. Releasing the shoulder blades and the middle back. Softening the lumbar area and the, and the buttocks. Releasing the groins. Relaxing the thighs and the knees and softening the shins and the calves. And relaxing the soles of the feet, the tops of the feet, all the toes, from the big toe out to the little toe. Feel the toes and then let them soften. Each time I inhale, <clears throat> I get a slight feeling of lifting through the spine, a very gentle lifting. And then each time I exhale, I allow the body to soften a little bit more. Maybe the face and eyes, maybe the ears, the shoulders. Anywhere in the body that needs a little bit extra softening. We'll continue for about a minute. Just in just breathing naturally and relaxing. Namaste. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Thank you, thank you everyone. Thank you, everyone. This is by Branch Supervisor of the Putterham location at the Public Library of Brookline. Uh, come in again to thank Keith for his um, con continued um, amazing yoga program. Uh, this will be our last yoga program for the immediate future. Um, we will uh, have advertising as soon as we know when it will restart. Um, uh, we wanted to thank the Friends of the Brookline Public Library for uh, providing support, financial support for this program and programs right. like it. We also wanted to thank our um, community partners, Brookline Interactive Group for um, streaming, for streaming this program, uh, over here. Um, for streaming, for streaming this program. Um, and, uh, and thank you, everybody. Uh, if I don't think we have too, too much time for questions. 